Hello Gemini, welcome to my channel, The Mother Speaks Tarot. My name is Allison. My channel uh, is just under, uh, just over actually a year old, so if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Um, those of you who do subscribe today, thank you, thank you so much. Everybody who's already subscribed, all my viewers, thank you all so much, because without you, this ch would not be a channel. Uh, those of you who are new and don't know, I'm also an author. I'm writing a series, an action-adventure love story on superhero twin flames. It's called Perception, the two yet one, book one here. I've read book one aloud live on Facebook, and then I uploaded all of those videos here to YouTube. If you uh, watch those or read it, uh, book two is published and available, okay? So all the links that you need for my books are in the description box below, whether it's to watch me read it aloud or, or purchase. Okay, so um, now let me just go ahead and explain what I'm doing here real quick. We are celebrating the father energy all month long as we celebrated the mother energy all month long. Um, we, we are dedicated to the mother energy who has been quieted and ignored for thousands of years, which is why she asked me to create this channel as a platform for her to speak, and she gave me her name and everything. Uh, we celebrated Mother's Day all month long last month because of that, and we received our messages from different mother energies each week. Uh, it was just Father's Day last weekend, so we're doing the exact same thing here. We love the father energy, the masculine, very, very much. Now, um, the first week we received our messages uh, from Master Jesus, the second week from Toth, and this week we're receiving our messages from uh, who I'm calling Father Nature, and to represent him, we've got Green Man here and Sir Nunes. Okay, I did some research on this, and uh, it says that Sir Nunes came first, but, you know, I want them back. I want them here together. I, I really like them. Um, so, there they are. This is from the masculine energy of nature. Okay, now... Um, because Sir Nunes and Green Man are from the UK, I'm going to go ahead and use the Forest of Enchantment Tarot by Linnea Weatherstone and illustrated by Mirela Allwood uh, because it is based on the forests of the United Kingdom and the fairy tales that arose from that, those, uh, those forests. If I need to clarify, I'm going to go ahead and use my little writer deck here. And at the end of the reading, I am going to pull at least two cards and read from the book from the Earth Magic Oracle Cards deck by Stephen D. Farmer. Alrighty, so as a reader, I read minor arcana cards as messages about your free will and major arcana cards as messages about your divine blueprint. Your divine blueprint is the plan that you wrote for your life before you incarnated so that you would encounter and hopefully learn certain poignant lessons of life that when learned, raise the vibration and wisdom encoded within your soul. The free will makes it possible for us to lower in vibration in a lifetime, but if you can manage to rise in vibration lifetime after lifetime, you eventually get to a life where you are what is called enlightened, uh, like Jesus, like Buddha, like Toth, like Isis. And um, we all know that uh, people that are enlightened like that affect a great deal of positive change um, on the planet. So when I'm looking at your uh, major arcana cards, it's kind of like looking at fate, but not really because of the free will thing, okay? There's times when uh, we can't change something in our life, no matter what we do, and those times are fate, and we've written them that way. Those are indicated to me by the wheel of fortune, which you don't have. So let's go ahead and get started here. Right here at the heart of everything, you've got this um, keeper of boons, in the reverse. The boons is earth energy, Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus energy. Let me just show him to you right side up. The keepers are the kings. So this is the king of pentacles, king of coins. Um, this is a mature individual. However, this individual is not in his good energy. This is the kind of guy who... Um, he judges you how you spend your money. He just takes over things that he thinks you're not doing well. That he is like he just mows you over. He's very domineering when it comes to 
um, what you're doing with your money and stuff and, and not just your money either. He's just very, um, yeah, he, he's just going to mow you down, do what he wants and judge you. So there's this, now either this person is mature in body or mature in spirit, but this is how they're acting right now. They don't have to be an earth sign like a Virgo, Capricorn, or Taurus. Um, they can, they just are, they could just be embodying this energy. And this is a masculine energy, which it, I would just want to point out that could still be a woman. It just depends. Okay. There's women out there that are more in their masculine energy than their feminine. So you know uh, who this is, okay? Now, the forces that are crossing that here are uh, your own energy here, the Six of Challenges, all right? Now, the, the Six of Challenges is swords, okay? That's air energy along with Libra and Aquarius, okay? That's what you are, Gemini. Now, uh, the Six of Swords is about moving on. It's about uh, you're done and you're moving from choppy waters to calmer waters or you're about to take a journey or something. However, you know, I, the, the different decks that I have have different imagery. And this one is mostly, a, this little um, dwarf woman was in the forest and she was being chased by these magical wolves. And so, uh, first of all, this deck wants you to know that these are all magical. Okay, so these wolves are like the ones in the fairy tales. They will eat you up. Okay, so she had to run from them and now she's up in a tree and just kind of waiting them out so that they give up and then she can finally go home. But, um, so in a way this is moving from choppy waters to calmer waters, but I, I just feel like there's, you may have done that, but you're still kind of waiting for the danger to pass. Okay, you're moving on, but not just yet, like moving on in steps, perhaps. You know what I mean? Um, you have another journey ahead of you. You made that tiny little journey up the tree, but now when the wolves go away, there's going to be another journey. It's going to go home. You're going to go home. Okay, so whatever uh, journey this um, jerk over here took you on you are waiting like waiting for the right time to go home or waiting for the right time um, to make your escape now here is the root of this okay so while it starts out with like a, like a masculine that's kind of a jerk here um, this is also a masculine that is a jerk, okay? The seeker of challenges is that he's a knight. The seekers in this deck are the knights. He's the only one who really looks like a knight in this deck. And he looks pretty um, forbidding. He, he is itching for a fight. That's what he's all about. You know, so the knight of swords is different in other decks. Like some decks he just moves, they focus on how he moves so fast that he'll start things and not finish them. In other decks he is coming in uh, real fast for war, which is basically what he's about. Although he doesn't look like he's moving very fast here, but he is itching for a fight, he's going to war, he's, um, he's combative, he's... <sighs> so... Yeah, this guy could be another air sign. And he can even represent the guy in the middle here that I was, that is this king. There, this is a masculine energy. And I think the, the, he may be older, but he is still kind of young inside and he's still just looking for a fight. Or maybe this person has brought you to this. Because look at this, this, if you're, if you're cornered by somebody, you know, what if these wolves decide to not leave? Then you might have to just fight. So since this is swords and this is your energy, this could be how you're feeling right now. You could be just sick and tired of this. 
and and you've like just kind of gone through something with this person and you're catching your breath so that when it when and if you need to you can kick some ass okay but i'm feeling this this double masculine energy here you know what i mean this is this is a shadow see and these are both people Okay, these are people cards. The child, the child is the page, the knight, the king, and the queen. Those are people cards, right? So we have a knight and we have a king here. And this knight is a masculine one because we do have feminine knights, feminine seekers in this deck. Now, this is the energy that's in your recent past that's moving out of your life at this time. And here what we have is the Forest Lord. So he reminds me a lot of Sir Nunes, which is probably who he's supposed to be. Let me just show you guys. Yay! Right? Aww. But the thing about this Okay, well, this is the good father energy. I could totally represent the father energy with this card. Okay, this is the divine masculine. Okay. However, he's in the reverse for you. And this is your recent past that's moving out of your life at this time. This kind, loving protective and supportive sacred masculine energy never manifested for you because this masculine energy here is in its shadow energy it's toxic and that's exactly what the emperor or the forest lord in the reverse is it represents the distorted masculine energy so you know whether this kind supportive protective masculine energy never manifested it, it it's because what was manifested was this jerk energy okay um mowing you over judging you uh wanting to go to war itching for a fight looking for one um, basically making sure nobody has any peace. So bye-bye, adios. <laughs> right? And there goes the phone too. Bye-bye, adios, distorted masculine. Hang on, guys. All right, sorry about that. We have a landline here and it rings sometimes. <laughs> um, all right, so the next two cards are future cards for me as a reader. So here's what we have. Um, Child of Boons. All right, so this is Earth energy again, Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus energy. Uh, this, when this child is in the reverse, I, I believe this is the one where he expects people to take care of him. I'm going to look it up in the book here. Yeah. Inexperience and in earthly practicalities, can't manage money, expects others to care for him, and doesn't always tell the truth. Okay, so this is, um, since this is the child of boons, there, I, I, I don't feel like this is a message. Because these, the children, which is the page, the pages are messengers. However, this, this deck is more focused on, on people. This, this could be a young um, earth sign acting like this. Um, however, you've, you've got this older earth sign here who's in their shadow and 
And like I was saying, they maybe they're acting a bit younger here in this night energy, and then we come to this. Now, I'm sure it's possible that there could be a young earth sign or some young person in your life that is uh, about to embody this energy. But I'm really just kind of seeing, I mean, look at this. It's like a it's it's like a gradual decline. You know, the this seeker um, is out of all of the seekers of this deck, this is the one that really upside down or not, he portrays um, war. He portrays um, wanting to get in a fight. And, and just be itching for one and looking for trouble and making up trouble and all this stuff. So, and this one, it, it could be because they don't really know how to act. They're immature. All right, so the next card that we have here in your future is the Eight of Visions in the reverse. So this is not fully manifested either. The Eight of Visions is the Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups is walking away. However, this has a different feel to it. This is, the, you know, when I first saw this imagery here, I thought this was like different life stages of one woman. But when I read the book, it isn't. This is a lot of different women. This is um, women that have passed away in the midst of searching for something that they lost. This is the card of depression, of staying in such a sad energy that now you can't get out of it. This is in the reverse. It's not fully manifested. This is still just a possibility. Don't let this manifest. Okay? But you start to feel depressed that's what this is this is emotion eight of visions visions is cups cups is emotion getting overwhelmed with emotion and that's what usually causes the people to move on however this is about people who can't move on and stay in that energy and die in that energy and now there are these ghosts that that's all they do is search for what they lost and are sad it's a really sad but important message This type of energy here, this shadowy masculine energy, um, that is basically the goal, is to get people to feel like this. Okay, so I'm pulling another eight, all right? So eight here and an eight here. The, the very next card is another eight. So you might wanna pause this video or do it afterwards, but go ahead and look up angel number 88. Now this is your hope. Um, this is the eight of coins or the eight of pentacles. 
that is um, usually about working real hard, getting better at your craft, maybe even learning a new craft, which is what she's doing right here. This is the fairy tale about spinning flax into gold. And you can see that she's got these uh, different tries going on here. She got just a little shimmer here, a little bit more shimmer here, a little more. And then finally, this is kind of a brassy looking gold, but now she's really getting it. Okay. This is full on in your hopes. You are really hoping to that maybe if you work at it, you can use alchemy to turn this thing that's been not shiny and beautiful into something that is shiny and beautiful. This is alchemy, what she's doing. This is trans, it is making something completely new out of earthly materials by using intention, by using your magic. And I think that you're hoping that if you learn how to do this, if you get really good at what you're doing, if you pay enough attention and if you work really hard, you'll eventually transmute this into gold. So this is what is describing you right now. The child of spells. This is the spells are the wands. And um, this this child is enthusiastic and full of energy and really excited to learn this new skill. Okay, what he's doing with his wand is he's learning to use his magic and he's trying it out on a bunny. Notice how the bunny doesn't seem concerned in the slightest. So this goes along with this. Okay. Because this child learns by trial and error. This child is very, like I said, very enthusiastic, very brave, um, will take a risk, and doesn't give up easily. See? This is, you're, you're not giving up easily. Okay? So this is you. Even though this is fire energy, and your air, I really feel like this is you. Okay, you don't give up easily. Um, you know, you're a playful person. You're brave. <clears throat> Pardon me. But um, this type of energy is moving out of your life. <clears throat> Pardon me. You don't want to bring it back in. This distorted masculine, uh, this distorted masculine energy can't be saved. It doesn't want to be saved. It doesn't want to stop fighting. Fighting is what it does. Fighting and making sadness is its job. You don't want to bring this back in your life. But if this is you just trying to move on and make your life better, that's good. However, I just really feel like this is your, you hoping to take this uh, unshiny situation and turn it into gold. And that is something that um, a child would think. Children aren't as realistic as adults.
This is your fear. And this makes sense. This is the four of pentacles, the four of boons. And it's called the miser card. You're afraid someone's going to be holding back, holding their heart back, and not making any sense. In case you're not familiar with this card, these are the ogre wives, the wives of the ogres. And in the uh, Enchanted Forest, the ogres are not like Shrek. They are the kind that will eat you up. Okay? They are not kind. So what has happened is these ogre wives created all these pies and they set up in the forest to sell them. However, you know, look at her bag. It's empty. Her money bag. Because they can't bring themselves to sell them. In fact, when people come up, they don't just refuse to sell them. They scold them. And keep all the pies for themselves. Then Now, that doesn't make any sense, does it? How are they, you know, all those pies are going to go bad. Are they going to eat all those pies? No. So if they, if all those pies go bad and they don't sell them and they don't get any more money for the ingredients to make more pies, it's all just a waste. However, these, they cannot bring themselves to part with their pies. No, it doesn't make any sense. And it sounds very childish, doesn't it? Even though the only one who knows what to do with these pies is a child. You're afraid that this person will be holding back and and it'll be because they're they're not thinking right. They're being unreasonable. So this is the potential outcome. What's this going to be, Gemini? Because when it's right side up, this is the wide, wide world here. This means this is the world card in other decks. This is the end of a cycle. This isn't. This is when the cycle is not over. So right now, I, I think that you're trying to resurrect some sort of relationship with a toxic masculine energy. So this will stay like this until you're ready to let it go. I'm being asked to show you. Look at this, this little dwarf lady. She's like, Phew. I'm so lucky I got out of that. They would have eaten me up. Remember this feeling. You know, you may have, um, you're sitting in the tree and you're like, wow, that was close. I am so lucky. Look at them. They totally would have eaten me up. But then after a minute and you catch your breath and you're starting to feel, uh, you know, strong again, are you, and they're not there, are you going to be impatient and, and jump down and try to run? So, because you, you know what I mean? If you put yourself back into the hands of this toxicity, it will eat you up. You are not using your own energy and manifesting a new uh, dream. You're not manifesting a new life. This is manifestation of things that don't serve you. You're not manifesting for yourself. And what you are manifesting is not what you really want. I think it's that, that you've just been bored. You're bored and apathetic and you're sad. 
the life, uh, the sparkle has gone out of life for you. There's no magic in life right now for you. You want to bring it back. See, look. There's no magic. There's no magic. There's this is the magician, the enchanter. He he manifests positive things. This one manifests negative things, selfish things. Black magic, things that destroy us instead of help us. And it'll break your own heart. You'll break your own heart unless you really look at yourself in truth and accept it and move on. Okay, um, let's get some um, Earth Magic cards for you, and we'll close out your reading. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Also, subscribe. And if you do subscribe, hit the bell. It'll let you know when all of my videos come out. And also, uh, give my books a shot, too. Like I said, I read book one aloud, so, and I've got those all on video. If you want to try it out, all you got to do is watch. Father Nature, please give me at least two cards. Thank you. Oh, uh, oh, uh, no. Oh, hang on, guys. I've got to pause. All right, that was a big mess, guys. I'm going to just take this one that um, landed on the floor first, and I'm going to get another one. Just one, please. Look at it. They're like... <laughs> no, we don't want to give you just one. Just one. Thank you. Oh, bratty. He gave me two. All right. We'll do three. Oh, strength, reflection, and celebration. Um, yeah. Um, hmm. All right. So what I'm getting from this, first of all, intuitively, is to practice strength right now. Okay. It's, it can be very tempting to try to go back to an old relationship or a relationship that's toxic. You have to, to, to not do that, to not screw yourself over by giving in. Um, you have to stay strong. You got to, um, yeah, I'm seeing the strength card, you know, because it, you know, it's where you, um, you kind of conquer your inner beast, you know, there, the inner beast in you, um, doesn't want to accept the fact that this is toxic. And and it wants you to just keep running back into the fire. But this is saying, no, stay still as a mountain. Stay strong as a mountain. Because while you do that, they, uh, Father Nature wants you to reflect. To reflect on what this person did to have you now have to be strong. All this war, all this depression and sadness, reflect on that. I feel like this, this winter here is all about the coldness this person showed you. The, this is coldness. Ice, ice king and queen. That's the, the king and queen of swords sometimes. And this is the seeker of swords, the seeker of challenges. This is an icy person. And once you realize, then you're going to celebrate. Because you made it. Because you made a new life. Let's go ahead and start reading these. We're already at 34 minutes. 
All right, whichever one. Winter solstice came up first. Wow. All right, I'm going to read it quickly. Reflection. This midpoint of winter is not only the shortest day of the year, but also the longest night. The world is very still and the land dormant. Varial, various festivals of light are celebrated celebration, and have been for thousands of years, serving as a reminder that the light will indeed return. Throughout many cultures, there are tales describing this time as the birth of the archetypal sun king, including the Christian story of Jesus' birth, representing the hope of renewal from the darkest period of the solar system. This image portrays a simple yet powerful representation of the winter solstice. We see a clear reflection of the snowy woods on the still frozen waters of the lake. The blue tint drapes the scene with an even greater sense of quiet and solace, inviting us to walk very softly, lest we disturb the intense yet gentle grace of the scene. The reflection of the trees on the frozen lake reminds us that this is a time for us to go inside, to both uh, our physical shelter as well as our internal world, and there contemplate the season that is past, the season that is, and the seasons yet to come. Yeah, this is exactly what I was saying. Uh, reflect the season that has passed. It's over. This toxic masculine and this whole uh, dance and reflection um, it was talking about the the celebration that the sun will come back this looks very sunny doesn't it so this says review the past year and ask yourself what the most important lessons you have had to learn are what you have accomplished and what dreams and visions you want to manifest in the upcoming year whether it has been rel a relatively smooth ride or a challenging series of events Acknowledge your experience as being the work of source, no matter what your judgments, fears, or joys are. Honor whatever has happened over the previous several months with gratitude and forgiveness. Then, let it go. Allow yourself some solitude so you can spend some quiet, slow time in reflection. Once you feel complete, reflect on your present life, especially focusing on what you are grateful for. When you are finished, consider what is to come, all the different possibilities and potential that exist before you. Allow your imagination to roam without limitation or ambition and see what shows up. Notice how you feel in your body with whatever scenario plays out in your mind. These are previews of what is gestating and can manifest and grow when cared for properly. Patience and stillness is called for here. For just as the earth cycles have their own pace, so does this cycle this cycle okay waiting what did you just go through what are you trying to manifest okay so what else mountain yeah. strength mountain the massiveness of the mountain in this image, bearing the blankets of snow as spe spectacular hues from the sun reflect from its body, evokes a sense of impenetrable and immovable strength and stature. A mountain's quiet, resolute immensity leaves us in awe and inspires us to reach for greater heights. Yet, it can also pose challenges. The firm base of the mountain evolves into the narrow, narrower crest in, it, in its attempt to reach the sky more daring individuals become enamored by the peak and see it as something to conquer, although it can never truly be conquered. When the mountain feels threatened in some way or simply shrugs its shoulders, the strength it exhibited can wreak havoc for all beings caught on its skin. Here's the divination part. It makes no sense to deny the strength you have at the cost of allowing yourself to be reactive and subject to external influences far beyond what is healthy for you. Whoa! Imagine yourself as a mountain of strength, solidly grounded in the earth, your head held high as if you were touching the sky. Do so without straining, just as the mountain itself does not strain. The current situation calls for you to be vigilant, but not to the point of fear or paranoia. Be that rock of strength that you are capable of becoming. The solidness of your resolve will be clearly communicated when you model yourself after the towering immensity of a mountain 
impenetrable and inscrutable. Standing steady like a rock is what is called for at this time. Dance celebration. Basically saying everything that the, that the reading just said. All right. Dance and celebration. Well, doesn't that look happy? Whew. This woman is dancing an ancient story, one that has been handed down for centuries. She's acting out this story through her movement, choreographed by the collaboration of tradition, ritual, and her own spirit. The dance itself sometimes becomes the story. Although unheard and unseen in this image, there are others who are singing and clapping to accompany this dancer. It's a communal celebration focused around a story that's been handed down for many, many generations. For thousands of years, our ancestors, no matter our lineage, celebrated with ritualized storytelling that includes singing and dancing. As in this image, the dancer's movement brings the tale to kinest kinesthetic life. The participation of the community in this heartfelt enactment helps secure the bonds of the people and connects them to their spiritual and ancestral tools, roots, it's tools, hmm, ancestral roots. When we celebrate anything in this way, it's always, it always touches a deep sense of love, gratitude, and appreciation. Here's the divination part. The sacredness of any celebration is dependent upon the quality of spirit that is present. The quality of spirit is greater to the degree that you are fully present with minimal inhibitions about expressing your joy and happiness through physical movement. Focus on what you want to celebrate. Put on some music and dance, whether slow or fast. Sing a song while you do so. Make one up about what you most have to celebrate. God's wish is for everyone to enjoy their time on earth and part of that wish is to celebrate your capacity to be joyous and express it through your body. Whether in private, with a small group of friends, or a large communal gathering, let music, song, and dance be a part of your sacred ceremony regardless of what you are celebrating, for truly any celebration is sacred. All right, so um, I just feel like this is telling you, okay? This is how you can get through this, but also you're going to be celebrating once you do finally end this cycle. So good, good luck, Gemini. I, um, I hope you enjoyed your reading, and I'll see you next time.